today's lesson is how to get more active and I'm Tiffany Calvert, County Extension Agent for Family Consumer Sciences. And I'm Angie Hudnall, Registered Nurse at Purdue Farms with the Health Improvement Program. And we have a special guest with us today, Alyssa Rhodes, and she is working um, at the Family Wellness Center here in Hartford. And I am so excited for people Absolutely. to meet Alyssa because yes. Well, I think she's just going to be my biggest supporter um, and when it comes to anything related to health, not just physical fitness, but also um, anything nutrition related. Um, and so I hope that you enjoy her today and her knowledge. And Alyssa, you have quite the story, the background <laughs> to share on uh, where yeah. you came from. And so just tell us a little bit about that story. Uh, sure. Um, well, uh, first of all, I'm an NASM certified personal trainer and I'm also a yoga fit certified yoga instructor here at the Family Wellness Center. I'm, I'm here four days a week. So I'm, well, I work four days a week. I'm here usually more often than that. But I've gone through a, quite a transformation. I was um, about 300 pounds in high school. I was really overweight. Um, and I had really no education on how to change that so there's a lot of series of things that happen in my life but I've um I've lost about 120 pounds over I probably wow. took it, yeah <laughs> yeah that's, like, that's a person that's a thing too yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, hey, here you are um yeah. so so yeah that was a, a big thing for me as I came into health and wellness and even when I was really overweight I would I wouldn't do things like I would restrict my my life because I wouldn't want to be active I felt like I couldn't do something because of my weight and now it's just really come to what can't I do? I mean, I might, I might fail. If I'm willing to try something new, I might mess it up. I might face plant. But that's how we grow. That's how we learn. I mean, I would have never, I was the kind of kid that made up excuses to get out of gym class. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little different now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, once I really started seeing progress and feeling good, like that was the big, a big difference. I felt like I could do things. I was more willing to try to do something sure. because I felt, felt normal. I didn't feel like I was held back by my size. And I said, I said, I was not a runner. No, no, no. It was, it wasn't happening for me. And because you couldn't, right? Couldn't. In your mind. Absolutely. I felt like I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then once I, even after I went on to college, I would start running like on my by choice <laughs> like nobody chased me like I, I chose to start running <laughs> I like, love that well yeah and I would do uh I, I've really really changed my life and changed my lifestyle I've done 5k's and half marathons so did you have that moment where your health maybe was declining or what was really that moment where you're like I have to do something I uh, I was actually I was in the hospital on my sweet 16th um, I've had an ovarian cyst, and it was just, it was a lot of complications um, because of my weight. I had internal bleeding, and I remember a surgeon coming in, and he had said, um, you know, it was just really hard to operate on you because of all your body fat. Mm. I wow. Yeah, I was in the hospital on my 16th birthday. Wow. And it was one of those things where, like, I, I could die. Yeah. And I, I hadn't even lived yet. You know, I hadn't got to drive with my license yet. Like, yeah. So it was, and I know how lucky I was. Like my school, I was in ROTC. I, um, I was telling you earlier, they offered extra workouts for the overweight cadets. And I knew that that was a wonderful opportunity. Um, we got some nutritional counseling and really the things that I changed. Like I was 16 when I kind of finished with my hospital stay and got better. But I stopped eating fast food, and I stopped drinking sodas, and I started losing weight. Just those two things there. Simple. Yeah. Easy. And it's all about the small steps. Yeah. Like, I always encourage people, start small, because if you, if you set these high goals, and you set a bunch of goals for yourself, like all of a sudden, maybe you're not active, and you're not eating right, and you're eating fast food, and you're drinking Cokes, you can't tackle all those at one time. Right. Okay. And sustain that momentum. Mm -hmm. So you just built momentum by those two simple things. Those two little things, and it, it really was. And once I lost some weight, I was like, "Wow, 
I just, that's the only thing I changed. I hadn't, I mean, I was still eating, you know, pizza with my family when we, when we went out or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I even was still drinking sweet tea at that time. I just wouldn't eat sodas. Well, I started making more little changes, you know, and started being a little more active. And it really, 20 pounds here, 20 pounds there. The day, I remember the day I got under 200 pounds, I called my mom, I was crying. Sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I lost a hundred pounds. Yeah. I think I was in my early twenties. I was in college. Wow. I was really, I was really lucky because I had a lot of resources. And then I just, I just kept going. I kept saying I was going to be a personal trainer because I would work with my girlfriends in college. And like, oh my gosh, thank you for showing me this. Mm. And then I kept talking about it and talking about it and talking about it. And then talking about it, I wasn't going to do anything. <laughs> That's right. So, you got to so, do something. So I, so I yeah. did. So I signed up for the Academy of Sports Medicine, and I went through my training. And I, working in Evansville, I got to work full time as a personal trainer. Usually, it's kind of like a side job. So mm -hmm. I got to and got to come into teaching yoga and teaching everything. <laughs> <laughs> and don't you feel like you can help more people? Because, I mean, people have excuses. Absolutely. And we have a whole list of them. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but and at one point in your life, so did you. So you know how to overcome just about any excuse. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I'm human. I'm human just like anybody else. I've got a sweet tooth and a lazy bone, just like anybody else. Mm -hmm. But... I know if I even just go take my dog for a walk, that I feel better, that I've got some fresh air, that mm -hmm. I've checked out of my to-do list mm -hmm. and my, you know, what, whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the great things about taking time for yourself, if, even if it's not vigorous exercise, taking time for yourself, bringing that focus like to what our goals are, or just saying, you know what, I've got 20 minutes for me. Mm -hmm. What am I gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. it can really change not just your day but can change that progress in your life mm -hmm. yeah as a mom of two young boys my morning time before they get out of bed is so precious to me um, and then depending on how my work day goes you know sometimes it's a, a mommy time in the bathtub mm -hmm. before I can be a mom and, you know sure. and that's with anything like if you take a walk your work productivity can just go through the roof because you feel better right You've stepped outside of your normal routine. You've had some thoughts, some quiet time. It's time um, to breathe. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, how often do we go days and weeks We're and hustlers. months? And We're hustlers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, did I even breathe during all that? Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Was that red light red or was it green? Like, when you get here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you get to that point and you and you start really being absent-minded and you have to write yourself notes to remember things and list and there's nothing wrong with the oh, list. Oh, she's hitting me hard. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the list, but when your list includes, you know, pick up my child at 3.30, you're probably too overwhelmed. That's true. Absolutely. Because that's yeah. important. It is. It yeah, is. I think it's, it's the most important. Yeah. So, um, how would you, um, you know, as a nurse, I tell people, um, well, let's park further away from the door or let's take the stairs instead of the elevator. How would you explain um, how they can do it to the next level? Sure, I mean, I love that because you're just, you've walked further today. You've made a conscious effort to say, I'm gonna do something better. Making a decision is really the first thing. It's just say, you know what? I don't have to spend 20 minutes looking for the closest parking spot. I was just gonna say that. I'm like, <laughs> since I've started that, I'm like saving myself time. Absolutely. Yeah, go right in the right. We, we, uh, you know, I, you know, we practice gratitude. I'm so grateful that I have two legs that work well because yes. not everybody does. And I'm so grateful that I can yeah. park in the back of the grocery store and walk to the front. Mm -hmm. um, and like other little things you can do. Uh, I, I love to do calf raises. So just like standing on my tippy toes and bringing my heels back down while I'm waiting in line. And we wait in line most of our lives. A lot. <laughs> a whole lot. And yeah. for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Even, <laughs> so it sounds... Um, I would even do like twists, which makes me look really silly, but I would just kind of lean to one side and lean to the other, so I'm engaging my core. Mm -hmm. You can stand on one leg, like just picking one So foot. that's balance, right? Yeah, starting to balance, and it seems so simple, it's a, it can be really challenging if it's something that you don't do every single day. Right. Just right. picking one leg up, 
you're engaging all those little stabilizer muscles in our body that we don't use. You've got little muscles all through your legs, through your core, and also if you're standing on one leg, you're probably going to be practicing good posture because that's kind of what we have to do to get that balance. Oh, okay. So little, little things. Yeah, yeah. But now, you know, I hear it and I, I'm the blame as well. I say, you know, but I've got this old injury and, you know, I just have a lot of difficulty and, and I'm my age and, you know, all those excuses that we come up with. Um, choices are very powerful things. You know, if, uh, you know, I've got, I've got a list of excuses if you want them. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes up like a little bit of hard headedness, sure. I think. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, Be you stubborn. Think. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But like, even when we're having injuries, we're thinking that I had a broken wrist at the beginning of this year. I taught yoga in a cast every single, <laughs> for every single class. There you go. Yeah. You know, I see people come to the gym wearing boots. There was a woman in here earlier with a cast on her foot. She's Still got, working out. She's got <laughs> excuses. She's got valid excuses. Mm -hmm. But, you know, even as we age or when we're overweight, everything's ch more challenging. And starting simple. Um, sometimes with my clients, we literally just sit down in a chair and we stand back up. Sit down and we stand back up. We sit down and we stand back up. And it seems so simple, but as we age and if we're carrying weight or if we've had injuries, that's challenging. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, especially like if you're playing with little ones or if you've got grandbabies getting down on the floor mm -hmm. and getting back. Up, getting yes. down the floor, getting back up. It's so it's it's you know if you're if you're an athlete, you're active. You're like whatever. But when you're not, when you're just beginning to make those changes, that's a challenge, and it's practice. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to just find out things that are hard for you to do, and then do them again. You know, get your body moving. Yeah, getting down in the floor and then getting back up sounds so simple, but with two young boys. I mean, I can already tell a huge difference when yeah. I sit in the floor yeah. for a period of time, you know, mm -hmm. you get back up and you're like, wow, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, it's probably time I need to start working on this a little bit more. <laughs> Come to muscles are right. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so speaking of muscles, um, what kind of um, information can you give for those who want to build muscles? You know, there's the nutrition side and then of course there's the active side. So for nutrition, I like to keep it simple. Just like I was saying, we can get down to counting calories and carbs and your macros and all of that enough to stress you out. Stress will kill you quicker than anything else will. Yes. Keep it simple. When it comes to getting better, one ingredient foods are real foods. If your grandmother would not recognize it, it's probably not a real food. If you find something that does not have a nutrition label, probably something you have to wash before you eat it. It's probably good for you. Um, Yay. Love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I mean real food. And then I, I, you know, it's just changing a different habit. And don't just buy the vegetables and let them rot in the refrigerator or on the cabinet. Eat them. I, mm -hmm. I encourage that. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm thankful for food that rots. Yes. And that sounds so strange yeah. to people who doesn't really understand what I'm getting at. But if it molds or it goes bad, that it's is real food. food. That's it like what real food should have do. It has active <laughs> enzymes in it that are good for your yeah. body. Absolutely. And if I know it only has a four-day shelf life, i got to eat it. Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> don't, just, don't just throw right. your money in the garbage bin. Right. Eat, right. eat the food that you've eat taken. It. You made the decision to be healthy and to buy the food. You make the decision to Google it. If you don't know how to cook it, call me. I'll, I'll, I'll walk you through it. Yeah. You know, be willing to mess it up yep. if you're going to try something new. Mm -hmm. And then hand in hand, um, yes, eating a healthier diet is going to do wonders for our body. Getting, moving, lean muscle burns fat. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people will start doing a lot of cardio and start having results, which is excellent. I'm so glad they're getting moving. But sometimes when we're just only doing cardio, ex you know, cardio exercises, you know, the elliptical, bicycling, running, walking, um, we might get this plateau. It's because we're not continuing to build our muscles. Uh, lean muscle burns fat. You're going to increase your metabolism. You're going to start building muscle through your bones. You're going to reduce your risks of getting osteoporosis. 
you're going to live longer, you're going to feel better. And it doesn't have to be, you know, racking a barbell and doing big barbell squats. You can do resistance training with a big rubber band. I'm a fan of the big rubber band. Yes. Yeah. Their yeah. resistance bands are excellent. Mm -hmm. And then you were talking about using a broomstick. A broom, yes, yeah. Most people have a broomstick or something at home. And if I can even just do, I love to do stretches with them. But I, I can just do overhead presses. Guess yeah. what? I'm lifting my arms overhead. I'm extending my back. I'm engaging the muscles through my shoulder. Yeah. Even if I'm just bringing it down to my thighs and lifting it up, I'm using muscles in my shoulder. It's not a big movement, but it's getting started. It's getting moving. Mm -hmm. um, and so, um, so I have those people that say, you know, I eat four fillets of breast every day, but so I don't have to exercise as much. Is that a good combo? Um, I'm glad that you're eating lean protein. Exercise. If you're eating a lousy diet and you're exercising, I'm so glad you're exercising. If you're eating a great diet and you're not exercising, I'm so glad you're eating a great <laughs> diet. Exercise is important. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to do CrossFit. If you do, great, you're probably going to whoop my butt at it. You don't have to be in competition with anybody, but exercise is vitally important just to keep us moving. A body in motion stays in motion. You know, I, I use a reference a lot. Our, our body is kind of like a car. So in the wintertime, if the car sits, it might take a minute and ache and creak to get the wheels moving, mm -hmm. but 100 miles down the road, <laughs> it's a different story. Everything loosey goosey. We're warmed up. We're moving. We're yeah. active. So, just getting yes. Is it challenging to get started sometimes? Mm -hmm. But after we've gotten started, you've got momentum. You're going somewhere. Your body is progressing, mm -hmm. even if it's the little bitty changes. Even if you know maybe we're really stiff through the joints and we can't reach up in the cabinet. Maybe this is as far as we've got. And maybe we've been practicing lifting our broomstick and maybe we can reach the top shelf. Awesome. You know, yeah. Just getting our body moving, loosening up through the joints, moving those muscles. So you said once before that really putting your shoes on is the hardest part. We'll talk just, ourselves out of it. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. You can talk yourself into or out of anything. The hardest yeah. part about saying, I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to go to the gym or I'm going to try this new class is putting your shoes on yeah. and leaving the door. Yeah. I can I can stop and reorganize my office and cut the grass and clean windows and find a million excuses not to do it right. before I just decide to put my shoes on. Yeah. All right. Well, I am so excited that Alyssa is now part of a resource that's available yes. to you. Um, and she can be reached here at the Family Wellness Center. And um, any final thoughts? Just come see me. Like I, I would love to ask your questions. I would love to ask your questions. I would love to answer your questions. I would love to meet you. Uh, we can, we can just get going. We can work through any excuse. <laughs> yes, <All right>. absolutely. <laughs>